Good day, I'm here with Daniel Grant from Leadershape. And today I was hoping to get some insight into how you see resilience in modern day life. Well, that's an interesting point. And uh, people talk about bouncing back, but for me, resilience is not about bouncing back. It's about moving forward from difficulty with some learning that enables you to grow your own capacity and ability to deal with the next disruption when it comes along and knocks you off your feet. Oh, that's a big self-improvement then really, isn't it? It does. And really what happens to us in resilience is that we start catastrophizing and we start looking at everything else that can go wrong instead of using um, realistic optimism and realistic pessimism, which is not about looking at the extremes of, oh, well, everything's gonna be wonderful or everything's gonna be terrible. Um, and you know, people say the old Darwinism of survival of the fittest, but that's actually not what Darwin said. He said, it's not the strongest of a species that survives, but the most adaptable. So resilience is about adaptability. We can't control everything that happens in the world. But what we have to look at and try to work out is what are the things we can control? What are the things we can do something about and do something about them? What are the things we don't have any control over and try and let go of that desire to control what is uncontrollable? I mean, if we look at evidence from people that have lived through imprisonments or um, you know, prisoners of war, for example, it's better for their mental and physical health to focus on how the best can be made of whatever circumstances they're in, rather than focusing on a time in the future that things are going to be better and they hope that things are going to be better. You know, when we think the end is in sight, we can manage ourselves better. So when we first went into lockdown, for example, and we thought, oh, this is gonna last six weeks or three months, we could kind of manage that. And that's why I think people suffered more in the second lockdown because there was less certainty about it was going, when it was going to end. And we couldn't jump forwards in our minds so easily to a time when it was going to be okay again. And that's what we found very difficult. Um, I mean, there's the old saying, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can and the wisdom to know the difference. It's a very old saying, but in resilience, that's really true. Mm -hmm. Really nice saying. Is that something that, so would you say that people got a bit more, um, it was difficult to handle the second wave over the first one, that we weren't really ready? I think we had all raised our hopes after the summer that we wouldn't need to go back into a second lockdown. So it was like a double disappointment. Um, but any one change you make on the way you think about something or the way you look at it and the way you behave will have an impact on the whole system. So for example, if people are feeling lonely and they don't tell anybody they're feeling lonely, nothing is going to change. But if they actually share with somebody that they trust the fact they're feeling lonely and that they'd welcome more contact, then people can respond to that and things will change as a direct consequence of actually saying, hang on, I don't have to sit here feeling lonely. I can talk to people and let them know I feel lonely because people are not mind readers. Um, and if you think about, and a lot of people said, oh, we used to play quizzes in the first lockdown and we haven't bothered, or I used to go out for more works, walks, not works, sorry. Um, and you think about the things that made you feel better and that are positive for you and try and reconnect with those things um, so that you're adapting to the new reality. Um, so when we, we are disappointed continually, um, we allow ourselves to go lower and lower. And ultimately it's about being in the moment, focus on what's true right now. Um, you know, other animals other than human beings can't imagine future threats. They only know what's here and now and they deal with what's here and now. We have this unique ability to think forward and catastrophize and that doesn't really serve us when what we're trying to do is to adapt to a difficulty and come out ahead. So 
you know, in the podcast, Sharon talks about diamonds in the dust, and that's looking for the silver lining in the cloud that you're under. Um, and that may be that you're, even if it's only on Zoom, more frequently with people that um, you used to connect with less often, whether it's that you've learned a new skill. Now, my husband, for example, decided he wanted to learn to shave with a cutthroat razor during oh. lockdown. <laughs> I mean, he is an absolute master at shaving with a cutthroat razor now. Wow. It's a small skill, but it's a, a satisfaction that he has of doing something different. Um, it's a risky it's, game to play. You could have gone for a Sweeney <laughs> movie right there. Yeah. Yeah. So what we need to ask ourselves, what is true right now? What is the real danger I'm facing right now? And ground ourselves in the present. And that doesn't mean it's a denial that bad things are happening, but it focuses you on your resource to deal with them. Um, and, and rather than increase your stress levels, it moves you into a solution focus. And that's really critical is to start to think about what can I do, not bemoan the things you can't do right now. Um, so, you know, we, we can capture the things that have been good about this time. So how do we work? Is, is there anything good in that that we want to take forward? How we communicate with others? What is positive about that that we can take forward? So, for example, in an office setting, we may be, have been quite formalized and wearing more of a mask. But when we've been on Zoom, it has been our dogs, our children, our interruptions, the, the Amazon man at the door, all the trappings of normal everyday life. And we no longer take that as an indicator that we or the people we're interacting with are unprofessional. Well, that's got to be worth taking back into the office with us, that sense of ourselves as real human beings that have got lives outside of the office and being more authentic. So, you know, what have we done with those that are important to us? How have we let them know that they're important to us? How have we interacted with us? Have we managed our energy? What have we discovered that's important to us? Lots of people have been baking banana bread or, or, or proper bread. Um, they've discovered new skills and new things that they can take forward from this time into a time of greater normality. So, you know, looking at Sharon's idea of diamonds in the dust or or silver linings in clouds, there will be things that if you calm yourself down and look at it um, with a positive light shining on it, and if you can't do that for yourself, what friends or family have you got that do have a, um, an optimistic spin on life that can help you discover those things that you can value from this time of, of crisis. So I think that there is a lot that we can uh, look back on, new aspects of ourselves, new skills uh, that we can take into the future. And that's what resilience is about. It's about dealing with the here and now, looking at the lessons that we've learned um, and what we can take forward from there. It's not about bouncing back, it's actually about bouncing forwards. And back that to the is, current state. That's really nice. And I, I remember um, a, uh, a group meeting I went to long before COVID when the guy running the group said, um, who in this room has made a mistake in their lives? And the whole room put their hand up except for me. So he picked on me and said, why have you not put your hand up? And I said, because I've learned something from it. It wasn't a mistake. It was a learning experience. Well, that's really good. Talk about adapting to the current system then. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, can, tell you, I can tell you of a time when um, due to a, a, a bad choice in a relationship, I was made to live in conflict with my values for a time. And that was pretty bad but actually realizing that that was not a sustainable way to live was what helped me break away from that and work forward in alignment with my values in a way that made me, or made me recover the whole person that I could be. Yeah. Would you say, but in that case, that makes it removing toxicity was one of the better things for you in your yeah. scenario then? Yeah, indeed. Out what was wrong and you adapted to it yeah 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 it's wonderful that's great 
Yeah, no, I think as far as going into insights about the resilience factor, I think you've covered it really well. So thank you. And thank you for your time. My pleasure.